back. We're here looking at Illustrator again. And right now we're gonna start looking at the line tools. Uh, this is a pretty simple topic uh, that has lots of different pieces and lots of options. So there's gonna be a lot of details we're gonna go into. So you're gonna wanna sort of real pay attention to what we're doing in here, as well as remember that this video exists so that later on when you need to come in and remind yourself how to do some stuff, uh, this video is here to help you, okay? So we're gonna talk about the line tools today. So I'm gonna jump back over to Illustrator and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by creating myself a new file to work from. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to File and I'm gonna go New. And in this case, it's defaulted back to the same size documents that I've used in the past. In this case, uh, it's a 10 inch by 10 inch artboard, okay, in RGB color. That's perfectly fine for what we're doing, uh, but we do need a name for it. So I'm gonna call this line tool practice because that's what we're doing. We're gonna practice with the line tools. When I hit okay, it creates our brand new line tool sheet, uh, our artboard that we can work on and populates all of our properties boxes over here on the right and lets us look at the line tools. So the line tools um, make you do stuff with lines. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, but each of the line tools has different features and there's a lot of different things we can do with the line tools based on what we wanna do, okay? So let's start out real simple. I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side. This is our toolbox. And I'm gonna come down to where I see this simple diagonal line. And when I put my mouse over it, it says line segment tool. So if I click on that, nothing seems to happen. Nothing really changes, except when I bring my mouse out, I now have a crosshair instead of a mouse pointer. So something has changed, and we're gonna talk about that in just a second. But I wanna point out something really neat. In Illustrator, there are lots of tools, including multiple line tools. If you look over here at the line tool, you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little white arrow. It's present on the line tool and text and the pen tool and the shape tools, but you notice it's not here on these two selection tools. What this little arrow means is that there are multiple options in this tool. So instead of just clicking and releasing, I'm going to click and hold. And now when I release, it's brought up the menu of the five different line tools that Illustrator offers. Line segments, arcs, spirals, rectangular grid, and polar grid. Of these, the two that you're gonna use the most often are the line segment and the arc tool. So let's start off with the line segment and see exactly what it can do. So coming over here to my board, I have just this crosshair. I'm gonna left click and hold my mouse button down, and then I'm gonna drag my mouse. And as I do, you'll notice it creates this sort of blue, blue-ish line, and there's a gray box on the right-hand side that's got some information on it. The D stands for distance. That's telling me how long my line is. And right below it is a number, in this case, 349. That's telling me what degree or what angle it is compared to horizontal. So if I move my mouse around, you notice those numbers change. I can make it really short, 0.34 inches at zero degrees, so it's perfectly flat, or uh, 7.31 inches at 338, doesn't matter. Uh, but I can go ahead and I can unclick, I can release my mouse, and suddenly we have this dark black line. So this is a standard line, okay? And there's lots of pieces to it. Now, that's one way to create a line. You can just click and drag. There's another way, instead of clicking and dragging like that, we can click and release. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click and release one time with my left mouse button. And suddenly what I get is this options box. In this case, it's the line segment tools option box. And it says, hey, how long do I want my line to be? Well, maybe I want a nine inch line. And I want it at 24 degrees. We're gonna ignore this fill line right now. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna hit okay. And you notice it creates that line for me. So that's two different ways to create a line, either by clicking and dragging which I can create as many lines as I want to as fast as I want, or I can click and release and tell it exactly what I want. So that's how we can create lines all we want. 
Now, obviously this artboard's getting a little crowded and we wanna show you some detail work. So we need to be able to get rid of stuff. So to be able to get rid of stuff, you have to be able to, to delete it. So I'm gonna come over here and the very top option is this black filled arrow called the selection tool. I'm gonna to click on it and I'm just gonna come out here and I'm gonna left click and drag and I'm gonna drag this box around everything on my artboard and then I'm gonna unclick. I'm gonna let go of my left mouse button. You'll notice it's created this barrier around all of my options, objects. It has selected them. So these are now all selections and you'll notice they're inside this box with these little white squares on the outside. So this is called a bounding box. It just represents a container with everything inside of it. And these little white boxes are called anchors. And you notice if I put my mouse over it, it changes to a little double arrow. So if I click and drag, I can manipulate my entire box a little bit, change you know, the size, the shape, things like that, um, whatever I wanna do. But in this case, I just wanna delete them. So I'm gonna go straight to my keyboard and I'm gonna look over at my keyboard right above the arrow keys, the up, down, left, right arrow keys, there's a set of six buttons and the lower left one is delete. So I'm gonna hit the delete key and there it's gone. So that's how we delete stuff that we don't want. We use the selection tool to click and select those items. And then we use the delete key to get rid of them. But let's talk about what the line tools do some more. So I'm gonna grab this line tool and I'm gonna draw myself another line. Now with the selection tool chosen, I'm gonna come over here, I can click on it. And this tells me, hey, I'm selected this line. We're gonna manipulate it. So let's talk about what we're seeing on our screen right now. Over here on the right, we have options. Now, most of these don't matter. You might have one that says appearance, which tells you a little bit about the line. Uh, but what you really care about is this one up here. This menu bar tells us all of the pieces that we care about for this project. Now, as we look at this, let's talk about what each of these mean. So the first thing you'll see is path. And if I put my mouse over it, it says object type. What it's saying is that this line, what they call it is a path. We'll talk about this a little bit more in class, but Illustrator is just a math program. It records starting points, directions, distances, and draws it. And what it does is it calls it a path uh, is what you create. And then when you actually make it colored, like for example, this one has a black uh, outline to it. That's what's called a stroke. So let's talk about colors. This first box has to do with fill colors, which we won't touch on until we get to the shape tools. Second box is our stroke color. So you notice right now it's square outline of black with a white center that tells us it's the stroke. It's the outer border. And if I click on this down arrow, it should give me some options. And if I click on, for example, this RGB green, you'll notice over here, my line is now green. Select it again. I wanna make it orange. Now it's orange. I can pick whatever color I want. I'm gonna go ahead uh, and pick, oh, I don't know, let's go, let's just, let's go with red because it sticks out a little bit. So we've got this red line. The next option you see is the word stroke. And when I put my mouse over it, you'll notice it says stroke panel. This is an orange link. It's kind of like a, a hyperlink on the internet, but it's telling you, hey, if I, you click here, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different options. So let's click and find out. When I click, it opens up the stroke panel and it gives you all these different pieces. The first one is weight, which is how big is this line? And measured in what's called a PT or a point. Uh, you might recognize that word from working in fonts. You know, if you open up a Google doc, uh, your teacher might tell you, hey, you have to write your Google Doc in Times New Roman font at a 12 point size. So what a point is, it's, it's a measurement of distance. One uh, inch is 72 points. So if I take this 0.94, replace it with 72, I get a one inch wide line as my uh, stroke, okay? So while the path tells Illustrator where the line is going, the stroke tells Illustrator, what are you drawing on it with? Are you drawing on it with a really fat red marker? Or maybe you're drawing on it with a thin red pen, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this a little bigger. It's a little easier to see what's going on as we go. 
So there's a, a 30 point. And so the next option under weight are caps. Now the default cap is what's called a butt cap. It means that when your path reaches the end of a line, it just stops, okay? And it's a squared off edge. The next option is called a round cap. And what happens there is that it gets to the end of your path and draws this perfect little semicircle based on how wide your stroke is. So that's a rounded cap. The last option is a projecting cap. When we click on it, you'll notice that we get the same extension from the end, but it's square instead of round. So that is a projecting cap. And those are the three cap sizes uh, that we're gonna work with. Now the next three where it says corner, don't really affect us here because we don't have corners to work with. So we're gonna ignore those for right now. Same thing with this one that says align stroke. Um, it doesn't really matter to us because there's nothing to align at this time. The next one we have is this dashed line section. It's grayed out right now, but if I check this box right here, you notice it suddenly turns into a dashed line. And it says, hey, 12 point dash, blank gap, blank, blank, blank. But maybe I wanna say my dash is 20 points and my gap is five points. Okay, and then maybe my second dash should be 30 points and then my gap should be 10. So you can create custom dashed lines if you want to, but that's just another way to play with the system. I'm gonna uncheck that dashed line box and I'm gonna go to this last one. The last one says arrowheads. And if I mouse over, it says click to pick arrowheads to apply to the starting point. So I'm gonna click on this one and you notice, hey, it automatically built an arrowhead. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Maybe at the other end, I wanted to have a little triangle. I can change the scale of each individual triangle or, or arrowhead that I want to, depending on what my goal is. Okay. And then you can align it. Do you want it to start so it, the tip of it is at the end of your path, or do you want it to start at the end of your path and then extend out? That's up to you. But again, just different things that you can change about a single stroke. I'm going to go ahead, scroll up and select none on both of these so that they go away. The next thing that you'll see up here is uniform profile. This is your width profile. We'll go into these a little bit. They, they won't come up very much in glass, but they allow you to change how your brush stroke is applied over the path. So if I take width profile one, it creates this nice smooth shape. Path two has two bumps. This is sort of a straight one with pointed ends. Here's a triangle. But again, just different ways that you can play with it. Uniform is just a solid straight line. My next option is my brush. We'll go into depth in brushes later on. Uh, but for the moment, just know that there are different brushes that you can paint with. So you paint normally with a pen. You know, here's a charcoal one. Here's your basic one. Here's a dot line. Um, there's, there's a lot of features there and, and we will work on that as we go. I'm gonna bump this back up to 30 points so it's easy to see. Opacity, well, that has to do with how clear something is. You notice there is a transparency panel, just like there was a stroke panel. Uh, but for me, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with this. If I take this down to 50%, you'll notice it gets kind of faded. That's because you're seeing through the line. And we'll dive into opacity a little bit later on in much more depth. But understand that 0% opacity got to have it selected first. Zero percent opacity means that it is completely see-through like a pane of glass, whereas 100 percent opacity means that it's solid like a brick wall. Okay. Next up, we've got a bunch of align tools, which we will dive into a little bit later on, uh, as well as this align grid and our transformation panel. And we'll talk about how those work a little bit later on. Uh, but this is the basics of the absolute core, the line tool itself. Okay, so you can always be able to use this line segment tool to draw different pieces in different sizes and in different colors as you work, okay, and in different ways. So that's the basic line tool, the line segment tool. I'm going to go ahead and delete these by selecting them all using the group selected, drag a box around all, and then pressing the delete key on my keyboard. And we're going to look at the arc tool. So this is the second of our line tools. And once again, to get there, I 
left click and held on the line segment tool, and then I select arc tool. Come over here, I'm gonna click and drag just like we did the very first time. Click and drag, and as I go, you'll notice it's creating an arc in between the two points. Let go, and there's my arc. It creates a nice smooth path between the two. And I can modify it exactly the same way I did all the rest of the work uh, in the previous step, make it as big or as small as I want. I can adjust the end caps, things like that. But it allows me to create just a smooth arc between two places. So that's all the arc tool is. It lets you build those arcs. So I'm going to select that and delete it again. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at the third one. That's the spiral tool. So as I click and drag with this, you'll notice that it creates a nice perfect spiral on my page. If I let go, there it is, my nice perfect spiral. Uh, and as you go, you might notice that, well, I, I can't change anything about it other than physically how large it is. And we'll talk about how that works in a little bit, but just understand that the spiral tool lets you create these nice corkscrew perfect spirals on your board. Once again, I'm going to use the selection tool, select and drag, press the delete key, and it's gone. Next up, the rectangular grid tool. I'm going to click and drag, and you'll notice it creates a nice little grid. So, you know, if I need to create a, a chessboard or a checkers board, this is a great way to create squares. Uh, but as I go, you'll notice that every time I click, I'm creating the same number of squares, which doesn't really help me. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those, and we need to talk about a new feature. And that feature are the alternate options. So I'm going to come back to my basic line segment tool. Now, when we worked with the line segment tool, if I click and drag, and let go, I get this line. I can also click and tell it, well, hey, I need a six inch line uh, that is at 24 degrees. But there are a few ways to do this a little simpler and a little more option, a little more straightforward to get a couple of options done. So again, arrow tools, select them both, delete. I'm gonna click my line segment tool again. And this time I'm gonna click and drag. And you notice I've just sort of got it going off at an angle. But I'm going to go to my keyboard while I'm holding down my mouse button, and I'm going to click the shift key. When I click the shift key, you'll notice it suddenly snapped horizontal. If I let go, it goes back to my mouse, and I can move it around. Okay. Every time I press the shift key, it goes horizontal, which kind of makes sense. That'd be a real easy way to make horizontal lines using shift, uh, but it'd be kind of limp do everything you needed to do. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to move my mouse. And suddenly when I get close enough to this angle, it snaps to this angle. If I keep going around, well, now it'll snap down and around and all this. So what's happening here is that the shift key is an alternate mode. So if I click and hold shift, it automatically locks my line to the nearest 45 degree angle. So I can create a perfect 45 degree angle or straight up and down, however I want. And that's by holding just the shift key on my keyboard. The other alternate key that I can use or a modifier key really uh, is the alt key. So if I click here roughly in the center of my board and start to drag, it creates my line from the center point out to wherever my mouse is. Now, if I press shift, it gives me that horizontal line, which is great, but that's not what I want. Maybe I want a line that's perfectly evenly spaced on either side of the center. I want it to be, you know, two inches to the right of it and two inches to the left of it. So we're gonna look at a new key, the Alt key. I'm gonna press Alt, and suddenly, instead of growing my line in one direction from the center out, like that, now it's growing it from the center both directions. So I can create a line that is equidistant from my starting point at the same time. Now what's really nice is that I can use that Alt key to create that double-ended line, and then I can also at the same time hold down the Shift key and lock it in to that 45 degree mark. So that's something to think about, is you can use these keys in concert together to create different patterns. So 
those modifier keys, Shift and Alt, are kind of interesting with the line tool, but let's look at how they apply to the arc tool. Again, I'm gonna click and drag. Now this time I'm gonna start with just pressing Shift. So if I press Shift, suddenly I get a perfect 90 degree arc, a quarter of a circle, okay? So the Shift key, when you're using the arc tool, creates a perfect quarter of a circle instead of a line that's knocked in, locked into 45 degrees. If I press the Alt key, it just like before grows my arc from the center and I can again use both of them together to get that same effect of growing from the center as well as being a perfect 90 degree arc. And you'll notice as I play clicking and dragging in certain directions I can get different arcs built. So again shift and alt allow you to modify these lines. I'm going to use my arrow my selection tool drag a box, delete all those again, and let's look at our next tool. So the spiral tool, if I drag it out and I press shift, it lets me lock the end point into our 45 degrees. That's, that's pretty straightforward and pretty easy, okay? Now, again, I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna try alt. Oh, what's happening? It's hard to see, but as I make it bigger, it does in fact change the length of the spiral at the end a little bit. It's, it's very hard to see. So as I come into this, I really kind of look at it and be like, well, why can't I make this longer? What if I want this tail to be longer? Alt and Shift don't do it. So we're gonna look at another set of modifier keys and that's the arrow keys on your keyboard. When I click on an arrow key, I can do a whole lot with it. You'll notice I just deleted a bunch of my spiral. And what this is, are the arrow keys up and down. As I press the down key, it deletes segments. And as I press the up key, it adds segments. Now you notice every time I do this, it's creating a 90 degree arc on the line. We're removing a 90 degree arc because the spiral is just a series of 90 degree arcs. But that's up and down it allows us to go ahead and modify that, okay? But that's what you can do to create more or less spirals. And down keys with your, prop, with your work, okay? So just be aware that those are all options that exist for you to work on. Now, if you look at mine as I'm building right now, it's changing a little differently. Now, as I move my mouse, it's changing the distance in between those arcs, in between those spirals. And that's accomplished with our good old friend, the control key. This is again, another modifier, works on this one, that creates a change in how that shape is built. So again, playing with the shift, the alt, and the control key, and your up and down arrows can create some really cool patterns as you work. And also create some good arcs for whatever you're trying to do. So the last one we're gonna work with is this rectangular grid tool. And earlier, our problem was that we had to create the same number of squares every time, which doesn't really help us. So what we need to do is we need to be able to change how many columns there are. To do that, we're gonna go ahead, and use that rectangular grid tool, start dragging, and we're gonna use some modifier keys. The first modifier key we're gonna try is the shift key. So let's see what happens. Well, as I press shift, You'll notice what it's done is it's locked my grid into being a perfect square. Every single one of my squares or, or central pieces is a perfect square. That is the length and the height are the same. So that's our first modifier, our shift modifier. Now, if I press alt, well, what's happening? It's growing from where I click. So this is the same thing alt always does, okay? And if you remember right, we can always use shift and alt together to create a perfectly square grid using the shift key that grows from where I clicked using the alt key. So we can create this perfect grid, but that still doesn't help us creating more or fewer shapes inside. So I'm gonna click and drag again, and I'm gonna go ahead and try the control key. As I press control and try and move things, nothing's happening because the control key doesn't modify anything. So that's okay, we're gonna ignore control. And let's go over and let's look at our arrow keys again. In this case, I'm gonna start with up and down, the same ones we use on the spiral. 
So if I press up, oh, something changes. As I press up, you'll notice it's adding a horizontal divider every time. If I press down, it removes those horizontal dividers. I can do the same thing with left and right. If I press right, it adds vertical dividers, whereas left will remove vertical dividers. So I can change the number of squares or rectangles in my grid by using those modification keys, the up, down, left, and right arrows. And I can always come back in, change my colors to whatever I want, change the size of my lines, things like that. Now, the big thing with this shape is that we finally have a use for the corner and the align stroke options. So we're gonna play with the corners first. And let's start by looking right up here. I'm gonna make it a little bit easier to see by increasing the size of the stroke. But the corner option, we start out with what's called a miter joint, which means that our path, denoted by the little thin lines with the dots, our path is in the dead center of our stroke. That means the stroke is even on either side. Since we have a 30 point thick stroke, means that there's 15 points on the top, 15 points on the bottom, it's 30 total. This one, with our corners, uh, it starts out with a miter and it tries to keep that 30 point distance. It's not perfect, but it tries to keep it. The next option is this round join. When we click on it, well, look what happens. It curved the outer bit. So instead of it being pointy on the edge, it's now a nice soft curve. Our last option is what's called the bevel join. And what the bevel join does is it cuts them off just lops them off. Instead of it being a nice smooth transition, it's just a harsh angle uh, that goes from 90 degrees down to that 45 degree cuts. So those are our corner options. The other piece that's now available is the align stroke. Now it defaults align stroke to center, which is that our path is right down the center of the stroke, but we have two other options. The first one is align stroke to inside. And if you look at the line, it has the path with all of our stroke inside. So when we click this, suddenly our stroke is all inside the line. Now you'll notice that there's something weird going on here because we have round caps. If I change this to a butt cap, they go away because this is just a series of lines put together automatically. The other option is if I go align to the outside, now our stroke is on the outside of the line. You notice it doesn't change anything in here because there's nothing to be in or out of, but we'll go ahead and put it back to center to make it look sort of standard. But that's what our corner and align stroke do. And they don't affect every single line you work with, but in this case, they will affect this grid tool. Now you may have noticed there is one more grid tool. It's the polar grid tool. It works just like the, round, the rectangular grid tool, except it's round. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it, add more, take them out, cut the pie up, remove the pie. Um, there's lots of things you can do, but it works exactly the same as the rectangular grid tool. We won't use this very often, uh, but just know it exists. But those are the line tools. Most of what you can do can be accomplished with this simple line segment tool. We'll have some more powerful tools later on but this is going to be the starting point for how we look at how Illustrator handles creating basic artwork uh, and basic drawing.